Hey guys, and I'm sure you already saw the title to this video. So I would like to tell you it is going to be a story time. It is about the birth of my first daughter and it is a pretty heavy video. <laughs> I'm sure you saw from the title. So it is a little different than the other videos you have seen on my channel, but it relates to my life and I feel like I'm not the only one who has a daughter that's unexpectedly born with special needs. So I just wanted to tell a brief to the point story because there are several story times that could spin off of this story but i'm just going to make a very long story very brief and to the point and make it that way as much as possible so well, we lived in florida for five years after we got married my husband and i and we relocated back to the area that we were from because of a job promotion for my husband and so i had bypassed all genetic counseling when I was in my first trimester because my personal belief is I, it wouldn't matter to me anything so why would I go through that it doesn't matter so I skipped all that and just so you know I have hypothyroidism I have a very slow thyroid your thyroid controls all of the hormones in your body so I was getting non-stress test bi-weekly on Tuesdays and Fridays the last few months of my pregnancy and on Fridays I, oh, I had appointments usually so I went into a regular doctor's appointment I was 37 weeks pregnant got a check and then I went to get my non-stress test uh, that is where you are laying in a hospital bed they hook you up to monitors and they're tracking movement and the baby's heart rate and that sort of thing. So after one hour, they saw on mine, the nurse did, that my baby was not moving like she should have been. And they have, I hate to call them shockers, but essentially that's what it is. It's like a little buzzer that they put on your stomach and it startles the baby if the baby is sleeping and then it jolts the baby to move and then the baby will wake up and start moving just to get you know past the test so that didn't work and then she called the doctor on call he sent me to a maternal center and they were had the capability of doing a bpp which is a biophysical profile it's a one hour long ultrasound but before they did that they wanted to do a more invasive non-stress test so I went in for the not the more invasive non-stress test and it came back as failed. I failed it. My daughter failed it. And then, and I was by myself because I was just going to a regular doctor's appointment. And I told my husband, you know, don't worry. I'm just getting these tests. I'll let you know. And so then because I failed that, they gave me a Sprite to drink. An hour later, they decided to do the biophysical profile, which is a very in-depth ultrasound. And she still didn't move and it's a 30 minute ultrasound. And at that point they said, you failed, I got a six out of 10 and I failed with tone and movement, but everything else passed. So everything else was good except for tone and movement. And then I called my husband and tell him they're admitting me to the hospital. And I was told that they are just doing the same test the next day. They would be doing on that Saturday morning. So I get to the hospital, I get checked in, everything is, you know, hooking me up to all the monitors, that sort of thing. And then the doctor on call at the hospital that night with that was with my OBGYN practice, he said that he did not feel comfortable releasing me the next day to go home even if I did pass and he just said that at 37 weeks pregnant that you know people are begging to be induced and so he wanted to go ahead and induce my pregnancy so I was terrified I did not want to I was so scared I didn't want to end up having a c-section and then I against I was just like you know what I'm just gonna go home and I'm just gonna go into labor naturally and then when I come back you know we can figure out what's going on and he was like yeah no I don't feel comfortable sending you home I don't want to go over you know the things that could happen if you went home so I got induced they induced me that night I was in active labor for almost 48 hours and on Sunday morning 
I finally was able to get an epidural. They did give me some pain medication in my IV throughout the weekend. And I went from five centimeters to 10 centimeters in about 10 minutes. And so my doctor, this was like, you know, three something in the afternoon at this point. The doctor that was on call thought that he was gonna be doing a C-section that day. So he was kind of just hanging out. He wasn't at the hospital yet because I hadn't made any progress. And then all of a sudden I went, I went the whole weekend without progressing. And then in 30 minutes, I went from a five to a 10. So it was kind of chaotic. And that, that's why I'm telling you this part because it just, it gets chaotic from here out. I then had this fear of my doctor not making it to my delivery or me not making it to the hospital in time to have an epidural and all that fun stuff. So they did have, the hospital actually had a doctor on call, but he was delivering someone else that the doctor didn't make it in time for, another doctor. So the nurses, I had a nurse in my room and then she called her charge nurse, which is like the nurse in charge on the floor at the time. And so they were gonna have to deliver my baby, most likely. And labor started and get to the point, like her head was already out and my doctor was not there. All of a sudden, he's t they're telling me not to push, but like her head is already out basically. And he comes running in the door. It was in the middle of winter. So he had a coat on, he threw his hat, or, and I'm sorry, his hat. He threw his coat on the floor, threw his cell phone, his car keys. I mean, he was sprinting and he put gloves on and he, I literally pushed one time and the baby was out and he delivered her without like any scrubs on or anything like that. So that happened. That was like chaotic and crazy. And they handed her to me and it was my first child and I didn't really know what to expect, but you wait and you wait for these t like long months and you're just so thrilled and you can't wait to meet your baby. And it's just like that moment was finally here and I looked at her, the first thing I wanted to do because she didn't have a name yet was I wanted to meet her first before we decided on her name. So I wanted to look at her just to see what she looked like, what, what kind of name. And when I looked at her, I thought, and I wanted to see who she looked like. Uh, my husband and I, we were very different. My husband has like dark hair, olive skin, darker eyes, and I'm the exact opposite of that. So I'm thinking, what is this baby gonna look like? And so I looked at her and my first thought, in all honesty, was, oh my goodness, she's had a very rough journey through the birthing canal. She's had just as rough of a journey as I have the last 48 hours. And then I'm just sort of like, you know, craziness is going on. I'm, I'm getting stitched up. I had like a stage three episiotomy. So that was horrific. Uh, I was getting stitched up for a really long time and I'm looking at the baby and then I, I, I just knew something was going on because the nurses were just being over the top, like, like asking lots of questions, like being super peppy and positive. Oh my gosh, do you see her hair? I thought she would have more hair than that. It just seemed like it, they were laying it on very thick, like trying to pull the wool over my eyes and so to speak, not really, but they were probably just avoiding a really awkward situation for them too. So then my husband saw her, he, they, he couldn't really get a good look at her because they laid her on my chest. And so she was right there. So he didn't really, get a good clear look at her and it wasn't until they were took her from me and they put her on their little warming bed um, where they clean them up and do their weight and their measurements that sort of thing and he walked over and the first thing that he saw when he saw the first thing he said when he saw my baby what our baby was what's wrong with her eyes and I'm and then literally I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I thought the same thing. What's wrong with her eyes? And then before I could even finish that thought, he says, does my daughter have Down syndrome? And it, everything just inside of me just shut down. I knew it. I knew in that moment, my child has Down syndrome. And you know, it was she was born in 2012 and I as many ultrasounds and as many non-stress tests and all this stuff I'd been through, I thought something like that would have been detected even though I passed on the genetic counseling. I 
just I shut down I stopped talking I was like wrapping my head around this I my best friend her cousin has down syndrome and I'd been around him but he was an adult I've I never even saw children or babies with down syndrome in public out and about never uh, at my school when I was in high school and elementary there there were people there with special needs but never down syndrome and so I really was very ignorant about about it period and so the nurse said to Jason the charge nurse she said why are you asking me that why do you think something is wrong with her eyes and he said because I think she has down syndrome and then he I could go more into this um in another story time but he had already looked up down syndrome stuff characteristics and features of newborns because of something God put on his heart he just felt it super heavy on his heart and we had no clue we had no clue whatsoever that she had down syndrome like no clue doctors nurses no one knew a thing so um he said her, she has a simian crease a simian crease like if you look at my hands and your hands there's three creases when you crease your hand and um people with down syndrome they just have two and it's called a simian crease and the reason is is because when they're in the womb people with down syndrome have very low tone it's called hypotonia so they have to work so hard to develop muscles that we have naturally and the reason we have three is because when we're in the uterus and when we're in you know our mother was still pregnant with us we scrunch our hands and we're tight and children with down syndrome babies with down syndrome they're more loose and this so when lila may was born it wasn't like balled up screaming and crying it was like she looked like a frog like totally putting her arms and her legs just like this and really didn't move and so the lady uh the lady the nurse looked at my husband and said i don't you know i can't, i can't say anything like that and then jason looked at her and then i looked at her and i said does my daughter have down syndrome and my husband was like does she and the nurse said i can't tell you yes 100 percent, but i can tell you she does have a lot of the features of a child born with down syndrome and the reason i can confidently tell you that is because my son was born with down syndrome and he's 16 now so I mean I literally have cold chills every time I think about that of all people to be in the room with the doctor being late the charge nurse that's in our room has had a child born with down syndrome like what is the likelihood of that happening and also you can tell in my daughter's feet her um, toes are just a little bit spread apart a little further than yours or mine would be and then she what I noticed the most I guess was her nasal bridge was flat people with down syndrome have they don't have a nasal bone right here so um, low set ears some stuff like that I mean not every single person born with down syndrome has these features but those are the telltale signs of someone characteristically with down syndrome so then the doctor still stitching me up because it took a long time says to me do you want me to, when he was done do you want me to go out and tell your family because like my aunts my grandma my dad my my brother my sister my mom they were all in the waiting room thank god i i'm such a private person and i just wanted it to be my husband and i in the room because that would have been probably worse to have that happen and then have all these extra people in the room where my husband and I weren't just together with the nurses and the doctor so he went out and told my family which was good because I didn't have to and then once they heard the news and they pulled themselves together they came in the room and of course they were amazing and treated her and treated me like like every situation happens when you go to the hospital and you see a new baby I just couldn't talk I'm a talker and I I just I, I I didn't have any words I was numb I was in shock I was in complete shock and then 
um, after my family met her, we took a bunch of family photos and then the nurse came in and, and was looking at her and said, she looks dusky. She looks very dusky. She was turning gray, not purple, not blue. She was turning gray. So at that moment, they got a pulse ox probe, which is the thing that measures your oxygen desaturations and saturations and your heart rate. So they put that around her toe and then her oxygen saturations were in the 70s and you're supposed to be at like 99, 100 when you're born. So they rushed her to the NICU and at the time it was a stage three trauma unit and that's where she needed to belong. So I was kept in the hospital for a few days because they were able to keep me there because of how bad um, my stitches were and needed to be the episiotomy. And she would have, she had a um, oxygen cannula, she had a feeding tube in her nose, which is an NG tube, and she would not drink milk, she wouldn't drink the bottle I was pumping, she would not take a bottle at all. And anytime she would, she would choke and turn purple. And I, then we went through genetic counseling, which we had already, we knew basically. I mean, it was quite obvious. We went through genetic counseling, which is the, the blood work and it's called um, the fish panel, fish labs come back and they do confirm or deny the chromosomal defect and down syndrome is um everyone has two um 21st chromosomes well she has three so that's why like 321 march 21st is world down syndrome day because she has three copies of her 21st chromosome and that happens at conception it doesn't happen anytime during pregnancy it doesn't happen right before delivery it happens at conception so she had Down syndrome from the moment she was conceived. And I, I, I was doing Oak as best as I could because I, we didn't even like focus on the Down syndrome stuff at that point because we were more concerned about her health issues because she was turning purple. We're still in the NICU. She's not getting any better. She's choking. And then all of a sudden they tell me that she might have to have open heart surgery. She might have a heart defect. She might have leukemia. She might have all of these things. And it was like the walls were closing in on me. Not only am I going to have this child with special needs that I don't know anything about, now it's coming to end with all this medical stuff. She might need open heart surgery. And uh, the regional uh, trauma hospital came in and they did an ultrasound at her bedside in the NICU. And it was a 30 minute ultrasound of her heart. And for those 30 minutes, my husband and I just sat and we prayed harder than we ever prayed in our entire lives that she would not have a heart defect. And we were so blessed that the lady, the ultrasound tech told us that day, which they're not really supposed to do, but I'm sure I was just a mess. And she said she doesn't have a heart defect. So, we were just oh so blessed and so thrilled and we just felt amazing. And then after that, things weren't get, getting any better with bottle feeding, um, with breastfeeding, nothing was getting any better. So then the hospital made the call to transfer her to the big, huge hospital that is a medical regional center. And she was transferred at eight days old and she was there for almost three months. She had multiple surgeries and she finally came home and she did come home with an array of medical equipment, but I don't wanna get into that in this video. I just wanted to talk about the birth story that it does happen that it wouldn't have mattered if we did the testing or not, the genetic counseling, because we did it with my second daughter, my second pregnancy, because I wanted to be prepared. I felt like in the delivery room, I felt like that moment of excitement and joy was just stolen from me. It was stolen from me because it was the scare of my life. My daughter turned dark gray and was it breathing and that was hands down the scariest day of my life on just 
out an hour after I had the best day of my life having my daughter. So it was just such an emotional roller coaster. And it's something that just because you think it would never happen to you, I don't need to get genetic counseling. It's not gonna happen to me or, oh, those odds don't fall in my favor. It does happen. But I can honestly tell you, like, it's, we're good. We're good. She's the sassiest, feistiest little girl in the world. But one thing that brought me peace was her pediatrician is absolutely hands down incredible. That he came, he was on call, or no, he was not on call, but they called him and he came to meet us and to meet her like that day. It was a Sunday. And he came in and the only thing the day of her birth that provided me with comfort was something that he said. He said the amount of worry that we have as you know, typical people, that Lila May having Down syndrome, the amount of worry that we have in like one day or one hour, she has over an entire lifetime. So basically saying that she's not gonna stress out and have the same worries day to day that we have. And that was the only thing that provided me any comfort because Down syndrome is not a spectrum like autism is or, you know, sensory disorder, anything like that. Down syndrome is you have a chromosomal defect, essentially. You have three copies of your 21st chromosome. So you either have it or you don't, but there are people who are you know, high functioning, medium functioning, you know, not really able to talk or walk. That does happen. There is a wide array and not all people with Down syndrome are the same. So I would love to follow this up with another video, just like educating you guys, or maybe you guys could meet her. She's amazing. Or I could do another story time about the journey that we had medically and all the medical stuff she had going on and things that we've overcome. And I, what, I don't mind sharing that whatsoever. We're advocates, we advocate for our daughter. We're so blessed to be in an amazing community where people with Down syndrome, we get together, we have play dates, and I would love to share any information and break down those stereotypes. And I think that it would be beneficial for people to hear because people with special needs are in everyone's community, not just mine or you know yours they're ever they're in everyone's community and it's always nice to remember that they are people first so they should be respected and they're amazing and my daughter is amazing and she's such a blessing and everyone who meets her feels the same way so i would love to introduce you guys to her and most importantly i do thank you for taking the time i know you saw the title of this video but just taking the time and and listening and being interested and hopefully there could be more videos that come about this we could do more story times about things it would just be too long for one video so thank you so much for watching bye